Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. By now we've seen that the chain of thought prompting framework works pretty well for reasoning logical tasks on large language models. The authors in this paper are essentially generalizing that to go from a straight linear chain of thought into a branching tree-like model of decision making. And this makes a lot of sense because if you think about the way humans go about solving problems, they rarely look at just one way to solve a problem. We will often think of many different options or approaches to solving a problem and work out each of those options independently and then do some sort of comparison of the goodness or effectiveness of each of those options and then pick the best one. And that's essentially modeling your thought process as a tree. And that's what the authors here are trying to do when using LLMs to solve reasoning tasks. This diagram explains the differences between these styles of prompting. On the very left, you see the simplest pattern, which is giving an input prompt that will usually ask for the answer or solution for a task, and the LLM will try to produce an output to solve that task. In chain of thought, you try to break it up into steps by asking the LLM in your prompt to not just solve the problem, but to come up with the steps that it would take to solve that problem. And the work over here is generalizing chain of thought to not use just one linear sequence as a chain of thought, but to propose multiple chains of thought essentially, and then keep running those as a recursive tree of thoughts until you get to an output. Now, one very important notion when you have a tree of thoughts is to also have a measure of which tree is looking more promising, a measure of which way is giving you a more effective solution or a better solution. The authors here are proposing two different heuristics via which you can associate this notion of goodness of a particular path down your tree. One way is to assign a value to each of these nodes in the tree. And you can do that by, again, asking the LLM to consider that current thought, give it the heuristic via which you're valuing it, and ask it to value each intermediate step. The second option is to look at a number of different states or a number of different nodes in your tree of thought and then vote across all of them to see which one is more effective. You can again construct a prompt to do this. The other thing you have to look at when you're doing any kind of research is the overall exploration strategy. And the two most classic ones are breadth first search and depth first search. They have three examples of concrete problems on which they've used this tree of thought prompting. The first one is Game of 24, which is a mathematical game which has the goal of reaching 24 using addition, subtraction, multiplication, division on any four numbers. That actually, I think, is the less interesting example because that is very computable. The other two examples are more interesting because they're more focused on language modeling. The first one is creative writing, where given four sentences as input, you want a passage of four paragraphs, each of which ends in one of those sentences. So that's an interesting constraint on the usual kind of prose writing that people use LLMs for. Another one is crosswords, and we're just looking at five by five crosswords, so a relatively simple grid with the usual horizontal and vertical clues for words. So how would we encode the creative writing problem? In the input prompt, we specify the four sentences that we want each paragraph to end with and ask the LLM to come up with some ways of satisfying that constraint. Let's say the language model comes back with five different suggestions or plans of how to structure these four paragraphs. 
the next step is to then once again ask the language model to vote on which of these plans is the best. And then the majority choice, the vote winner, is the plan that is used to produce the final output passage. So you see how you generated five options, you use some kind of a strategy to pick the best one, and then executed that best strategy. And in terms of benchmarks, you can see how using a tree of thought pattern for this problem, the creative writing problem, gave us higher coherency scores. So these are scores that are human evaluated, where the evaluator rates how coherent the passage is. So tree of thought beats out chain of thought, as you can see in this graph. The creative writing tree was relatively simple. It just had a tree of depth one. If you look at the crossword solving problem that has a much deeper tree it's a much more traditional decision tree and the way they've encoded that is you take all the input clues for the crossword and the llm proposes some thoughts and solutions and each of those states is then evaluated down the tree in a depth first search and for this problem you can see how tree of thought really shines if you look at the word success rate or the game success rate for crosswords, Tree of Thought gets 60% as its success rate on words, whereas Chain of Thought could barely rise above 15%. The overall game success rate is still pretty low at 20%, but it's much, much better than what Chain of Thought did in the same scenario. So these initial results are pretty promising. The authors acknowledge that the problems in this paper are pretty simple, but I think the overall tree of thought prompting pattern could definitely be applied to much more complex problems. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you like content like this, please like the video, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much.